this is a government that has you know, added 14,000 more bureaucrats to Wellington. And then in addition to that, has had record spending on consultants and contractors and communications consultants to the tune of $1.7 billion on top of all of that. Uh, what we're doing here is we're saying enough, we're not having that waste, we're going to get better delivery from our public service, we don't need to employ high paid consultants and have that money, which is taxpayers' money, taken off middle income and low income New Zealanders who are working incredibly hard in a cost of living crisis. They deserve that money, it's their money and they can do better things with it than what the government can. You know, I think one of the big differences is that Labor intends to throw spending f onto the inflation mm. fire, whereas we're reprioritising government spending in order to fund this, meaning mm. it won't add inflationary pressure to the economy. Yeah, exactly. On the topic of consultants, there are concerns that by absolutely consultants, in the case of a big event such as a pandemic or another natural disaster, there won't be the body to take care of the housing. Well, look, I'd say there is 14,000 more public servants than in government in Wellington than when this government came to power five and a half years ago. That is a huge increase in the public service that we already have. And then on top of that, we've seen another half a billion dollars grow, out, outgrow in, in the last year just on consultants' fees. And we know that that behaviour is really embedded in Wellington, you know, that you actually have public servants jumping across to be contractors, being paid a lot more to do projects of very little value. So we are under no illusions. We're going to take $400 million off the table uh, in consultant spend. We're going to cap it and cut it uh, and have it set for our first term so that we can actually fund this kind of policy. Practically, how would you do that? Are you going to ask the Public Service Commission to approve every consultancy? I can tell you it's very simple. Having run large organisations where you can get into the same situation and you need to get cost out of a system and you need to make reprioritise, it's very, very simple. Simeon Brown and I have talked about it. He'll be our Minister for Public Services uh, and we're very clear about our expectations, which will be very simply, you will meet this number. Uh, it'll be quarterly reported. Uh, we'll know what your consultant and contractor spend is and you watch how quickly the CEOs of those major agencies and departments will get their house in order. It makes them focus on the priorities and delivering outcomes for New Zealanders that really matter. That's the whole issue here, is that New Zealand, the New Zealand, this Labour government has forgotten to deliver improved outcomes for New Zealanders. It's spending more money, hired more people, hired more consultants and delivered worse outcomes. Prime Minister Chris Hipkins says that sometimes you have to pay for those consultants so that in the long run, with Health New Zealand and stuff like that, you'll have fewer public servants, fewer people in the bureaucracy. Do you think it's, it's fair to criticise that at the moment? Look, I would just say to Chris Hipkins, with all respect, he's been the Education Minister for the last five and a half years. And there is a department that has spent $5 billion more, hired 1,400, 1,400 more public servants, has also expanded its consulting spend by $95 million just in the last year to almost $250 million, and yet delivered worse attendance and worse academic achievement. And that is exactly the problem that we're here to solve, is that we have... We, we, we're not getting results with the spending that's going on. And, and this is really low value. It, it's, it's, a, it's just a boon for consultants and it's money that should be back in taxpayers' hands. What do you think about the government considering using road to replace car Look, I, I, I don't understand the proposal. I read about it this morning. But essentially, you know, what's happening there is they're going to take the road maintenance money and invest it in cycleways. And that is just something that we don't support. As we think about getting to an emissions, you know, more emissions friendly place in New Zealand over the long run, we need to make sure that we've got our EVs and our hydrogen trucks running on very good road networks. And our road networks in terrible disrepair. And taking the maintenance money and putting it into cycle lanes just seems like we're not solving the core problem that makes a big difference to daily lives for everyday New Zealanders. Mm. Well, look, I think you know, there's a lot that we've got to, you know, and you'll hear more about this as we talk with our climate policy in the coming weeks and months. But, you know, one of the things that we're saying and talking about is, as a government, what is it that uniquely we can do that the market can't do? And one of the things is, you know, if you think about charging networks, is there work that governments could do about consenting, you know, renewable energy quicker? There's a whole bunch of things that government could do in order to make New Zealand much more emissions friendly faster. Um, look, we know that there are some structural challenges in the sector and we have more to say about that in the future. What this policy is about is making sure that we can get relief to 130,000 families 
80% of New Zealand families that have got kids under the age of five. And you know, this is the situation. They're sitting at home today, trying to work out having refixed their mortgage from a 3% to a 6 or 7%, how they can afford those extra four or $500 a fortnight in interest rate costs. And you know, we've heard some tragic stories of families actually saying, I've had to actually pull my kids out of childcare in order to afford the payments for my mortgage. Now that is a terrible situation for families to be in. And so you know, I make no apologies. We are gonna take the waste out of Wellington because this is where it get, the rubber hits the road. This is where it gets really real for families and people. And we are serious about reducing the cost of living crisis. And this is a great action to do it. Do you know, I got a message from a grandma last night who mm. said, you know what, this policy is great for me because at the moment I'm looking after my grandson two days a week because yeah. my daughter cannot afford childcare. Yeah. Uh, and look, there are a lot of families in tricky situations across the country who when they juggle up the cost of all the tax they pay and their childcare fees are making decisions not to take a promotion or not to work a few more extra hours. Mm. We want to get rid of that barrier and our Family Boost policy will put money into people's bank accounts so they can make decisions about what suits them and their family. How this policy in real terms benefit or affect whānau that are living in the real world already operating on bare minimum Money as it is. Yeah. So the great thing is everything that currently exists today, you know, all the entitlements that people have today, that all remains. This is on top of all of that. And so it means that if you're shelling out, you know, you're gonna get a 25% rebate on what you're spending on childcare costs. And so some some lower income you know, families are assisted and through some subsidies, but they still have to pay childcare, it's a big part of their income as well. So it's a really fair system that actually means that everyone keeps all the entitlements that they've got, even the government's newly announced thing before Christmas, you know, that all stays in place. This is on top of that. And it's purely we can do it because we're going to cut the waste out of Wellington and send that money back to families, low and middle income families that desperately need support. Yeah. It is a really, really dire situation out there for families who are trying to wrestle with how they pay a new rent increase and then the food costs and the school costs and the kids costs and also they get hit with a, a car bill and they get completely wiped out and they make really horrible choices about food and about childcare and options and choices are not available to them. So uh, it's going to be a great win for low and middle income New Zealanders. Mm. Well look, our view is that Labor has borrowed from tomorrow to pay for mm. today. We've learned today uh, that the Transport Minister, fresh from saying that they were going to discount fuel, is now saying, but don't worry, we'll be hiking it up a lot more in future. And this underscores our view that you do need to be consistent in making sure you're funding the Lands Transport Fund, which pays for the roads, pays to repair the potholes, pays for the bridges, to make sure that New Zealand has the roading infrastructure it needs. So we will be making clear our policy on uh, petrol tax and tax charging before the election but look, we don't think a situation where it fluctuates dramatically up and down as Labor has done is the right way to do it. Well, uh, look, this is an area where I'm actually in agreement with the Finance Minister who has said the question is, how do you define what's a windfall and what's not? Uh, but what we are really interested in is making sure there's good competition yeah. in those sectors uh, mm. where we are seeing a lot of profitability. So it's really important to us that it's fair. Mm. And so we will look hard at these issues because we don't want any New Zealanders being ripped off. Yeah. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald. Click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here and head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.